Well, Carlin, we saw a very different debate than the type that we saw in Denver with the presidential candidates. How do you think each person did? Well, I think Vice President Biden did exactly what he needed to do, which was to get the Democratic base revved up again and to have an opening for President Obama, which he clearly did in the debate. Democrats are very enthusiastic about this performance. Uh, Ryan, I thought, did an excellent job. Uh, he was cool. He was calm. Very different from Biden in terms of style uh, and great differences on substance, uh, particularly on the role of government. How did you see it? Yeah, I saw it roughly the same way. I think uh, Ryan overcame his uh, youthful demeanor mm -hmm. with a very serious but measured tone. He came across as somebody who could think on his feet but also relate to the common person. Uh, Joe Biden was uh, much more heated and passionate, but that plays to his strength. And if you were somebody who needed to be revved up or needed to be uh, energized about uh, the commitment that the Obama administration has to the role of government in their lives, then Joe Biden was delivering for you last night. So, but we both mentioned the role of government. It's something that came up at the end of the presidential debates in Denver, but neither of the presidential candidates really engaged last night. Some of the best exchanges were on that, especially on Social Security, on Medicare. Let's take a look at the clip. He'll tell you about vouchers. He'll say all these things to try and scare people. Here's what we're saying. Give younger people, when they become Medicare eligible, guaranteed coverage options that you can't be denied including traditional Medicare. Choose your plan, and then Medicare subsidizes your premiums. Not as much for the wealthy people, more coverage for middle-income people, and total out-of-pocket coverage for the poor and the sick. Choice and competition. We would rather have 50 million future seniors determine how their Medicare is delivered to them instead of 15 bureaucrats deciding what, if, where, when they get it. Vice President Biden, too. You know, I heard that death panel argument from Sarah Palin. It seems every vice presidential debate I hear this kind of stuff about panels. Um, but let's talk about Medicare. Um, what we did is we saved $716 billion and put it back, applied it to Medicare. We cut the cost of Medicare. We stopped overpaying insurance companies, when doctors and hospitals. The AMA supported what we did. AARP endorsed what we did and it extends the life of Medicare to 2024. They want to wipe this all out. It also gave more benefits. Any senior out there, ask yourself, do you have more benefits today? You do. If you're near the donut hole, you have $800, $600 more to help your prescription drug costs. You get wellness visits without co-pays. They wipe all of this out, and Medicare goes, becomes insolvent in 2016. Within three hours of Ryan's selection as the vice presidential candidate for Mitt Romney, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee was running ads in many congressional districts about Medicare or Medicare. So we expected this to come up tonight. We expected this to be a central theme. And clearly, these two individuals have very different views about the proper role of government in providing for old age assistance. Both obviously want people to be taken care of, um, but they're very different approaches, and that's what we saw last night. Oh, yeah. I mean, just listen to Joe Biden. It's, what are we giving you? We're giving you money. We're giving you this. We're giving you that. And for Paul Ryan, it's, we're giving you assistance, but we think that you could make better specific choices about the life that, uh, choices that you need and the health care that you need when you're older. Uh, it's one is a hand up and the other is a hand out. Yeah. These are two very different visions, but we also saw that on tax policy. Let's go to that clip. The middle class got knocked on their heels. The Great Recession crushed them. They need some help now. The last people who need help are 120,000 families for another, another $500 billion tax cut over the next 10 years. Congressman. Our entire premise of these tax reform plans is to grow the economy and create jobs. It's a plan that's estimated to create 7 million jobs. Now, we think that government taking 28% of a family and business's income is enough. President Obama thinks that the government ought to be able to take as much as 44.8% of a small business's income. Look, if you taxed every person in successful small business making over $250,000 at 100%, it only run the government for 98 days. If everybody who paid income taxes last year, including successful small businesses, doubled their income taxes this year, we'd still have a $300 billion deficit. You see, there aren't enough rich people and small businesses to tax to pay for all their spending. I think Ryan there is doing two things at once. One, he's engaging Biden on the question of fairness. You know, Biden's saying it's not fair 
to give the super wealthy, the 120,000 families, more taxes. And Ryan's talking about, well, you're taxing them at the same rate as people who aren't super wealthy but are the ones who are creating jobs. Medium-sized small businesses are getting hit with the same tax rate. If we hit them that way, it's unfair. It's not going to grow the economy. But you also have uh, the engagement on the question of who's, very subtly, who's likely to tax the middle class. And what Ryan says there at the end basically says, if you follow their logic to its ultimate conclusion, then there's still too much money that they're spending and not enough money coming in to pay for it. The only way to cure the deficit is to hike taxes on everybody. And he says that they, uh, the Romney Ryan ticket won't do that. Do you expect more fireworks on both of these issues next week? Oh, I expect uh, Fourth of July style fireworks. Yeah. It's because the last debate is going to be about the foreign affairs. This is really the last chance for Governor Romney and President Obama to engage in the expectations on President Obama to fight back, unlike Denver, is so high that I'd be shocked if we didn't see more of this. What do you think about, a lot of commentators this morning are talking about uh, Joe Biden's mannerisms, his laughs, his frequent interruptions, his Cheshire cat smile. Uh, Joe Biden we've come to know and love, and Paul Ryan was cool and collected, and Biden was combative, uh, but it's, it's something we should have expected, and both performed, I think, extremely well. And we'll see how Saturday Night Live plays it in three oh, days. That's right.